This is Geometry Lesson 5.5, five, Proofs Using Reflections. We're introduced to a new theorem called the Perpendicular Bisector Theorem, and now that we have studied reflections, this theorem can be used. In its state, it states, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistance from the endpoints of a segment, and we can use reflections to do that. So this first proof that we're going to do is going to use this theorem. So here we're given that two points are reflections of each other. So I reflect x over line L, and I get y. And I want you to prove that my distance from A to x is the same as my distance from A to y. So the first part, I'm just rewriting the given. Second part, L is the perpendicular bisector of segment xy. Well, we know that if, if points have been reflected, that the reflecting line is the perpendicular bisector of the segment formed by my re points that were reflected. So that's the definition of reflection. Now, this theorem that we just talked about, perpendicular bisector theorem, lets me say then that any point that's on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant to the endpoint of the segment. So AX would in fact be equal to AY because of the perpendicular bisector theorem. The next thing we're going to do in this lesson is use the figure transformation theorem to prove that two figures are congruent to each other. So as you see here, we have a picture of a set of triangles and they've been reflected over line M. So we were given that individual points X was reflected and we ended up with X because it was on the line. We reflected Y and it ended up at W and we reflected Z and we have Z. And my goal is to prove that my two triangles X, Y, Z are congruent to each other and X, W, Z. So these two triangles are congruent to each other. That's my goal. That's what I'm trying to prove. So I rewrite my given stating that each of those individual points have been reflected. And I used given as my justification. Now we know that from chapter 4 that if, we in, if individual points of a figure have been reflected, we can then say the figure has been reflected. And so that's what we're going to do here. We reflected the individual points of those triangle, of the triangles, so now we can say the figure themselves, the triangles themselves have been reflected, and that's the figure transformation theorem. Now that something's been reflected, we can say that that figure is congruent. So this triangle was reflected and, re and, and we ended with our image was x, w, z, so that means that those two triangles are congruent to each other because of the definition of congruence. So now you will be exposed to many different proofs or many different examples of proofs trying to prove that figures are congruent to each other. So you can use reflections for that. And the process that you want to go through is right here. First you want to reflect the individual points, then you want to reflect the figure, and then you want to say the figures are congruent to each other. We will spend more class time going over different proofs like this, and you'll also be doing some in-class problem sets involving these types of proofs. This concludes Lesson 5.5.